So in this video, I'm talking about what I learned over the past 33 years of lifting weights. Long time. And I'll largely expect that for someone who's been training for such a long period of time, there would be a decline at this point. I am about to turn 48 years old as of the making of this video. And this is what I look like right now. So doesn't look that much different from what I look like in my twenties, my thirties and my early forties. And in this video, I want to talk about the fact that this idea that aging brings about a loss of muscle mass, a decrease in testosterone and a slowdown of sorts doesn't necessarily ring true. And I think that it's a preconception that as you get older, things are supposed to deteriorate. Whether you are young, just starting off or in the game for a long period of time, hopefully my experiences and some of the lessons that I picked up could help you as well. Stay tuned and I'll talk more about this. So in this video, I'm talking about what I have learned over the past 33 years of weight training. But before I go any further, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and thanks so much for the tremendous support, especially those of you who say this is a wonderful channel for anyone interested in training naturally. I really appreciate it. And do be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're first in line to get the new content as it comes out. So on the topic at hand. What I've learned over the past 33 years of lifting weights. So I started training when I was 14 years old and I, like I said, I have said so many times I was 125 pounds and six feet tall, really skinny. And I was able to transform myself over the course of, I would probably say 10 to 11 years into a competitive natural bodybuilder. It wasn't easy, but I did it. So. I competed in bodybuilding competitions in my twenties and my early thirties. I retired from natural bodybuilding, ironically in 2004, a long time ago, because I got to a point where my goal in life was to look like a bodybuilder. And when I was in a place where I was competing in bodybuilding competitions and either winning or placing the top three every single time, I felt like my goal had been completed and I didn't really feel a need to keep on going. That being said, I've stayed active in the natural bodybuilding community by coaching, judging, even sponsoring bodybuilding competitions as well, because it's something I think it's really important and I want to always give back to it. But for all these years, since I retired from bodybuilding, my training has been the same. And my dietary practices have been almost the same as well. So here's the thing, the way I look right now and the way I feel right now is really based primarily on my consistency. Consistency. At the end of the day, it all comes down to consistency. If you played a musical instrument every single day of your life, since you were 14 years old, never stopped. As you get older, you're going to get better at it. If you keep on playing it throughout your life, you're going to be just as good, if not better than when you were younger, because the more you do it, the better you get at it. Weight training is the same way. Eating well is the same thing. And I want to give you an example. Do this for me. Go into the push-up position. Push-up position, it's an exercise that works a lot of muscles in your body. Works your chest, your shoulders, your triceps, your abdominals, core. Excellent exercise. I want you to hold push-up position nonstop with a slight bend in your arms as seen here for a total of three minutes. That's a hard thing to do. But here's something that might shock some of you. I have clients in their late seventies who are able to do this particular exercise for three minutes. Now, most people in their twenties and teens would struggle to do this for three minutes. Why are they able to do it? It has nothing to do with their age. It, the, these are clients and one particular client has been with me for over 12 years. If you've been training consistently, nonstop for a long period of time, you reap the benefits and you're able to do things that you weren't able to do when you first started off. 
you keep on getting better. Age doesn't take that away. Being older doesn't mean you don't get better. You still get better. So someone like me looking the way I do shouldn't surprise anyone as a natural athlete. We just don't have enough examples of really natural athletes, people who don't stop. People who, from the time they're teenagers to the time they're in their forties and fifties and sixties, do not stop. Kenny Hall was perhaps one of the greatest natural bodybuilders of all time, not just for his accomplishments. Most people don't even know who he yeah. is, but because he was able to look the way he looked in his sixties into his seventies, that was a huge inspiration for me. And Kenny was able to show me that it's all about consistency. If you find a way to be slow and steady in that race, you're going to achieve a degree of excellence that's almost unimaginable. And that's all it is. Just consistency. I also only trained three days a week and I've only trained three days a week since I was 16 years old. That's a pretty long time. And my workout volume has always been very, very low. So I train max 20 minutes if I'm by myself. And if you think about it, the average person trains five times a week, more or less. I train three times a week. The average person trains for about an hour, hour and a half a week. I train about 20 minutes, three times a week, about an hour. That's about it. The amount of wear and tear on my joints over time is significantly less. And that's what I think the main thing I want to talk about what I've learned over the years is that the high volume approach might not necessarily be a good one. I have seen a number, not necessarily a number, almost every single person who I know who's been training all their lives, who don't train anywhere near as heavy as I do, who don't train anywhere near as hard as I do, tend to have significant joint injuries over time. Things like shoulder surgeries are normal now. Things like ACL tears and knee surgeries and meniscus tears, they're all very normal now mainly because people tend to do the same thing over and over and they overexercise. If you're training five days a week for an hour, hour and a half, that's a lot of wear and tear at your joints over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And I think that I can say with certainty that if I had been training the way I train, I was training five days a week for an hour. There's no way I would be in the physical shape. I would be now at 48 years old because my joints would have been completely worn up by now. And I've had some serious injuries. Now I have had injuries over the years. I tore my rotator cuff when I was 17 years old at the time when I was bench pressing somewhere around 405 pounds, which is absurd to say the least. And that was because I was doing something that was absurd. I haven't really had, except for that tragic incident where someone actually fell on my neck when I was curling 250 pounds back in the days, any other injuries that I can think of, I've been relatively knock on wood injury free because of the fact that my volume is low. And one of the things that the late great Kenny Hall taught me back fifth Avenue gym was the idea that you have to think about your joints and Thinking about your joints for me meant that my method of high intensity training with low volume was perhaps the best approach I was going to have in terms of being able to get into my later years without any injuries. So my elbows are great. My shoulders are fine. My knees are fine. I don't have any problems whatsoever. The only issue I have, I probably can't probably not can't do, but could not do a below parallel squat at this point in my career, only because my knees tend to hurt afterwards. Because again, when I was younger and not as smart as I am today, I would squat somewhere in the 600 pound range, going all the way down, all the way up and balancing on the bottom, which over the years didn't do too well on my knees. And I stopped doing that somewhere in my twenties, but damage was done still there. I have to work around it and which goes to What's different between me now and me in my twenties? And the answer is nothing. There's no difference. Might sound strange, but it's not. Here's why. 
when I was about 35 years old or so, I went through this bit of a dark point. I started feeling aches and pains. I started feeling like the weights that I was lifting were getting heavier. This is the point where I had just retired from competitive natural bodybuilding. And I think I was trying to find my way and had this perception that somehow or the other, that things were different, that I was getting older. I could look in the mirror and see, you know, physically that I looked the same more or less. And so when I was younger, I would have these meticulous journals where I write down every single thing about how I trained, what I ate, how I felt. And I stopped doing that somewhere towards my late twenties. And I came across those old journals and I was looking through them for some dietary um, feedback. And I found in the notes, some things I was saying that I felt like my joints were hurting sometimes. And I felt that the weights were getting heavier sometimes. And I felt like I was getting older, but I was saying that when I was 21 and I was saying that again, when I was 23 and I realized that I had been saying that on some level my entire life, because something always hurts and the weights always feel like they're getting heavier, but it's just how it is. So yes, at 48 years old, there are some exercises that I can't do anymore. I can't do a clean and jerk anymore because I have a neck injury. I have to work around it. But aside from some ballistic exercises that might aggravate my neck, I can pretty much do everything. But when I was 21. I couldn't do a bench press because like I said, I tore my rotator cuff doing heavy bench presses. I never did a heavy bench press ever again. So regardless of what age you are, you're always in a place where you have to navigate around the limitations of your body. Getting older doesn't mean that you have to all of a sudden start doing it. You're always doing it. So nothing really changes. I have a lot of clients in their seventies, early seventies, some in the late seventies. I have clients in their eighties. I even have had clients in their 90s. They train the same way. It's the same thing. And I think that it's important not to get ourselves locked in this preconceived ideas that older equals deterioration or that because you're older, you need to somehow take it easy. Why take it easy? Nothing has changed. You're either going forward or you're going backward. There's such a thing as cruise. There's a thing as maintaining. It's pretty binary plus or minus and it's important to always do your best to try to be your best. I'm passionate about training. I love to train. I'm passionate about eating properly. I love when my body feels fantastic because it means that I can do just about anything my mind conceive. I can go hard hiking. No problem. I can go hard cycling. No problem. I can do whatever I want physically now that I could when I was in my twenties, there's been no difference whatsoever. Only difference is the day afterwards, I might be a little more sore now than I was when I was younger, but other than that, it's the same. Just focus on keep on going. I've had clients who started training in their late forties and competed, started competing in their fifties. It can be done. There is no limit. I've had people start training in their sixties and build significant amounts of muscle to the point where. When they're in their seven days, they look tremendously different. Muscle will grow regardless of how old you are. And as you get older, it's not so much a matter of you can't do what you used to do before. It's about you're in a place, hopefully where you're mature enough to start questioning, should you do it? Now, can I squat 500 pounds right now? Yes, I can. The foundation's already built. So now it's all about sculpting keeping everything in, but still pushing to be better. And I want to leave you with that. You're always pushing to be better. Just because the foundation has been laid doesn't mean it's somehow like the, you know, the workers have to go home. You still have to work and you have to work as hard, but just working as hard on different things. I believe you can do it. And I hope that my experiences over the years are helpful to you as well. Thanks for tuning in and Excelsior.